Father Jackson Yugusu, the Rector of St. Lawrence Minor Seminary, Father James Rombe, the Vice Rector, Father Thomas Iga, the Episcopal Vicar for Tarakaika Pastoral Region, Reverend Fathers, all present here, Reverend Sisters, Reverend Brothers, Reverend Seminarians. Reverend Mothers and Reverend Fathers, I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I think today everybody is a reverend, including the cooks. Uh, they can be called a reverend cook. I bring you greetings from His Grace at Bishop Stephen, who is supposed to be here. But because of this important uh, mission, he has gone to Addis and he is come back today and so uh, asked me to officiate this Mass. To wish each and every one of you happy feast. Happy feast. Happy feast. I think today I am com completely happy because I, this is the first time for me to be to see this number of priests in the seminar. Just coming to celebrate with the seminarian. I think I want to congratulate all of you, Maburu fathers. Since Roba left this place as a vice director, he never came back, <laughs> except today. I think he is the subject of today. He was a vice director here. They planted those mangoes with the father El Colano. And then he went with a kulu kulu. I think today he, he, we, we caught him up. And I think he's here. Congratulations to all for this important occasion. Today we are here to celebrate. So there is no beating around the bush. It is celebration. I hope for the rector. It is truly a celebration. Yeah, because celebration, you know the meaning of it. So yes, it must be serious. Yeah, that's why I don't want people to stop when the bridegroom is present. So there is no starvation. So things are all changed. Seminar, and I think you will witness it later on. That things are changed. It's not the same like yesterday. Yesterday is different. I think today is also different. On this beautiful occasion, I congratulate you for the 27th anniversary. See from here, I, I think, how many priests were in St. Lawrence Minor Seminary? Of course not me. I was in another seminary. I will tell you later. Can it those of St. Lawrence Minor Seminary who have been in St. Lawrence from Munuki to Rajab? How many are you? Can I try to show yourself to the seminary so that you see? Father Dennis is here, Roba is there, James is there, and I think the rector himself. Congratulations. These are, I think, the few who are... And then, where is my famous Mari? Mari? Now, you are here, huh? And, and James, the other James. And Miji. I call him Miji because he is too small, but he is all right. Yes. And then, you are not of here, Jada? Eh? He just came here for three months. But you came here. <laughs> if you are not to come here, you would have not been there, my friend. It is because you came here. And then three months is not a month. It's not enough. Okay, we can increase, no? I think we, I will tell that bishop that I think he, he was three months only in the seminary, so he was, we have to add another one. But anyway, don't worry. Congratulations. We were the group of St. Mary's Minor Seminary. It was called St. Mary's Minor Seminary until 2000, uh, 1995 because it was a regional seminary. Regional seminary means the diocese of Tori, Juba, and Ye. We had one minor seminary, which was called St. Mary's 
minor seminary, which was formerly in Ukaru. Then it was because of the war, things changed. Then every seminary was having its own, every diocese was having its own seminary. But then the three dioceses decided to have the St. Mary's Minor Seminary in Torit. And then in 1980, 85, because of the civil war, Torit was under siege. Bishop Paride decided to bring the minor seminary from Torit to Juba. And we were putting up in what now is called Royal Hotel. If you go to Juba, there is a place called Royal Hotel in the Mugabe. That was our seminary. That's how, that, that's where we are. We were been there, I think. Uh, who is my colleague here? Augustine Kenyi. Augustine Kenyi was with me there. You are a teacher there. He was with me in St. Mary's Minor Seminary. And then, slowly by slowly, things started changing. Then each diocese, when things were now okay, uh, Tori continues with St. Mary's Seminary. Uh, Juba became St. Lawrence, and then Ye became St. Augustine. No? Yes. So, that is how it was uh, divided into three, uh, back three seminaries into the different dioceses. But that is not the, the case. The case is just to tell you a bit of the history of this seminary. That's why it is today 27 years. The choice of St. Lawrence as a patron of this seminary has not been brought up for nothing. It was important because of the, the vision that the late Archbishop had and thought of having a saint that is dedicated to the service of the poor. The service of the poor. So St. Lawrence fitted very well. And this is a saint that has a very simple history. He was a, a deacon in 280, uh, 258 when Emperor Valerian decided that all the Christians should be put to death and their property should be confiscated in Rome. By then there was a Pope there. It was a very serious case. So Pope Pius the Sisters, the twelfth, the, the second, and four other deacons were killed. There were only seven deacons in Rome. So four were killed, and Lawrence was left with two others. And he was crying that he wanted to, to die together with the Pope. And the Pope told him, in three days you will also follow me. And indeed, after three days, Lawrence was called because he was in charge of the treasury of the service of the poor. And the Pope, and, and then uh, Emperor Valerian, Valerian decided to tell him that, look, Deacon, now all the properties of the church you bring to me. You surrender them to the Emperor. And Lawrence did not refuse. He said, okay. He went, collected everything, and distributed to the poor, the, the, the blind, the crippled, and everybody. And then he collected those people after three days and, and came back to the emperor with so many poor people. And the Pope asked, the, the emperor asked him, I told you to go and collect the resources. What did you bring? He said, they are here. These poor people are the resources of the church. And that is how he got, he got killed. And he was, he was roasted. He was killed by roasting. He was put on a fire. Like when you do the nyamajoma. He was put on the fire on a grill until he died. So service for the poor 
means sacrifice when we speak it in the terms of the church. But then, who are the poor? Who is this person who is said to be poor? Sometimes we, we mistake this. We mistake this. Poor is somebody who does not have anything. This is the definition. If I ask you, Seminarian, today, that you write one page about who is a poor person, one full page, uh, what do you explain? Definitely, you will begin to say somebody who has no clothes, he has no shoes, he has no blanket, maybe no food, and so on. But generally, you may be correct. You may be correct partly that a poor person is somebody who is disadvantaged. And why this person is disadvantaged? Because there must be something that affects this person that disadvantage him or her. For instance, a sickly person, somebody who has no good health, can be considered a poor person because his health is not complete. Somebody who, who is blind, he cannot see, he is disadvantaged, he is deprived of sight, he can be considered a poor person. But, As you, you go on doing the definition, some scholars say a poor person, in fact, is even derived from the word poor. P O double -R, R. Passing, P stands for passing. The one O stands for over, the second O stands for opportunities, and the R stands for regularly. Passing over opportunities regularly. Do you get this teaching? When you pass over opportunities regularly, you become poor by design. You have an opportunity you allow the opportunity to pass, and then poverty takes over. You become poor, not because you are poor, but because you have passed over opportunities regularly. You have the opportunity, you don't seize the opportunity, you let the opportunity go. They say luck strikes once. When you miss it, somebody gets it. As simple as that. I used to tell the priest, where, somewhere else, not to you, that you have to be ready when the wind blows my skull cap, it should fall on your head. Well, okay. Then how Africa the gear, they can walk the white men rules with You should not fall down. You prepare your head and make sure it falls in there. Don't let the opportunity go. So this is what it is. So passing over opportunities regularly can create poverty. Definitely. You have the chance, you let the chance go. And then what do you do? The next time you start regretting, you know. Eh? You start regretting, you say, you know, you see this man going with this car, he's my colleague. Eh? We were together in the in St. Lawrence Minor Seminary. And then where are you now? What happened? You pass over the opportunity and the person sees the opportunity. You see that? Once you pass over the opportunity, then you start regretting and then you start living in these isolated dreams. Always, wallahi, you start dreaming things and then you start going down, down, down. 
So when you say service to the poor, the reading of today said it very clearly in the first reading. God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. That's what the first reading when St. Paul writes to the Corinthians. Meaning, you give happily. The first gift given to us is life. Do you regret about your life? No. My friend, you take care of your life. And then this life given to you is out of happiness. Out of cheerfulness. And this out of cheerfulness should also make you cheerful. When you are in the seminary, seminarian, I am now addressing you straight forward. When you are in the seminary and you are angry throughout, regretting why you are here, you will fail all the subjects. Automatic. Because you are actually not present. Materially you are here, spiritually you are not here. The whole of you is not here. So you should you should be here complete and, and enjoy the seminary because that is who you are. You should also be proud of it when you go out there and somebody say, don't joke with me, huh? I'm a seminarian from St. Lawrence. <laughs> don't, don't, don't think me just something, somebody else. You must be serious about it. Once you, you, you capture that, that becomes your propeller. That becomes your motto. That becomes your cheerfulness. You will be able to do it. When the bell goes, you, you don't turn the other side. When the timekeeper is ringing the bell, you are not getting the blanket and put it over again. You are pass it, passing over the opportunity. The opportunity now is saying there is a bell and you have to listen to this bell. Where are you to go? To go and take shower? Go and take shower. To go and eat? You go and eat. You go and sleep, you go and sleep. But when you do the opposite, I used to joke with my brother here. I call him opposite. When, when you do things opposite, then your life will become opposite. Automatic. Because if it is time for food, you are somewhere else. If it is time for going to the class, you are going somewhere else you are passing over opportunities regularly. At the end of the day, the, the message comes up that this person is not performing. Why? Poor man. The bishop will say poor man. What happened? He has passed over opportunity regularly. He has become poor. How do you serve God in the poor when you yourself is very poor? So you need to capture this cheerfulness. You have to do it properly, with happiness, with joy. And that is where God says he loves a cheerful giver. You are trying to give and then he gives you even more. You are trying to make effort and then God acts into it. And that is what it means to, to capture opportunity in order to serve our brothers and sisters. Once you are not able to capture this, then it becomes a bit difficult. The seminary becomes a bit difficult. When you think about the seminary, it becomes like a prison. A complete prison. You are afraid of the rector, and especially the vice rector. Terrible. Once you put that fear into you, alas, you are passing the opportunity. Our rector used to be Father Arcangelo when Father Nile left. Who are left with those of other when I am punished, I am happy. Recently, when we met with him and I was conducting the retreat for the priest, he said, This one here, this bishop here, he was a very good seminarian. When I am late, I am late. When I'm told to be punished, I go to be punished, I do my punishment, I come back, I say, Father Rector, I finish the punishment. Is there another one? He said, No, it, it is enough. I do it happy. 
Because I know that I was wrong. I was mistaken. I don't go there to defend myself with all those philosophical statements. Nothing. When I'm late, I'm late. When I'm, I'm on time, I am on time. When I'm said I have to be doing this, I do it and I do it cheerfully. Once you don't do it cheerfully, then you miss the opportunity. There are certain things which are given you in order to prepare you for this opportunity that you are to go into, the service of the poor. And now you have to do it in practice. You have to practice it every day. So don't take being in the seminary like a cross that is too heavy, that you are actually punished. No. Your parents give you the opportunity. The seminary gives you another opportunity. The teachers give you another opportunity. The church gives you another opportunity. So all these opportunities keep growing. And in this case, if you discipline yourself according to all that has been offered to you, then you will harvest, definitely. We are told here, you will harvest in abundance, definitely. You will harvest. If you become a priest, you will be a good priest. If, if by God's grace you do not become a priest, you will become a very good person. You have some here who have, not, who have been in the seminary, but they have not made it to the prison. But they are very good people. Disciplined. Why? Because they seize the opportunity and put it into, into practice. We are also told that the, the one who wants to serve God will receive honor. And this honor does not come for, for nothing. It says in the gospel, the grain of wheat has to die in order to grow more. That is what it means. When you cultivate all these things here that you do, they have to go to the ground, Muskina. You, you plant the maize. And that one maize has to die to give you more maize. Is it not like that? One ground has to go down to give you more ground. Is it not like that? Somebody has to suffer for something. I hope my, my, my English here is not becoming more complicated. Seminary. Somebody, something has, somebody has to suffer for something. You don't, you don't get it just like that. You come to the seminary, you sleep and snow. No, 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 no. This one does not get this. You don't get certificate of sonore. Nothing. You must work. It is a serious responsibility. At what time are you waking up in the morning, Father Rick? 5.25. Sharp. Everybody up of the bed. And this bed must be put in order, like the military. In the military, for us who have a bit of training of the military, if you are not disciplined, you will be shot in the feet. Because you don't know how to, the tactics, the tricks. 5.25, check. You are up of the bed. The bed is put in place. By then, our rector used to check whether your bed seats are put properly or not. Otherwise, you will be called in the class to go and put your bed seat properly. You have missed something. You have to get up and put your bed properly. You don't get up like a duck or a bird and just fly away. No. From the, the room, your bed must be tidy. And then from there, you take off to take shower, to brush, and so on. You are lucky you have borehole here and maybe some water. I see a trailer coming. During our time, we go to the river. Because the river was near there. And our waking up was also a, a, an advantage. Because we go under the mangoes, the mangoes that fall at 3 o'clock in the morning, we were the first to collect. Of course. That was the incentive for waking up very early. So you wake up at 3 o'clock, you go there, and the mangoes are full there, you collect the mangoes, you take shower, you come, you go to the classes, the mangoes are waiting for you. They will answer later. <laughs> because you have already determined to get them. So waking up early in life 
is very important because you set your day. But when the bell goes and then you go the other side and then you 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 say, oh, oh there are those who are homesick. Eh? We used to call them Jenna Mama, the children of the mother. They love the mother so much that they cannot be separated. Yeah, 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 well, yeah. Go to the seminary. You, you have Jenna Mama here? Yeah, I think the director said they are not here. During our time, they used to be there. We had one Jenna Mama who always wants to stay near the mother. No. You are in the seminary. When the porridge has sugar, you take it. During our time, there were times when there is no sugar. You have to fire the medida without sugar. And it is all the same. For us, it is all the same. Sweet or bitter, you take it. And that is, that is how you, you get to, to suffer. Not the suffering of death, but suffering in order to rise. To be able to persevere in your ministry tomorrow. There are moments when you will have to venture by yourself. Another thing is work. Work. I see at least the seminary looks a bit. But you, you have to work. The, the, those who started planting the mangoes for the, for those of are Now you are, are they eating those mangoes? You are eating those mangoes planted by those of Adaroba? Eh? When they arrive, you eat them. Now, do you plan yours? Or you want to eat haganas? Eh? You see, this is the problem. Why don't you do yours? Also, so that when you become a priest, you come back and say, when I was here, I was the one who planted this tree. At least you are able to show to somebody something. Work. Because there is no seminary without work. Even me now as a bishop, if I don't work, if I will die of diabetes. No? I, I have to do my own thing. You, this priest here, they work. So you have to work. Then study. That is another cross. You read until your eyes become dark. You have to read. Those who, who, who roll the exercise books and put in the pocket. You read from behind. <laughs> eh? I used to see when I pass by there, those days I used to come here. You roll the book and then you put it at the pocket behind. That is not why that book should be. It should be on the head. You, you read those books. <coughs> but when you don't read, you come to the seminary, you sleep. And then you, you enjoy the sleeping. You don't work, you don't exercise, you don't play football, you don't do all those kind of things. How will you prepare to the ministry later? It will become difficult. Definitely it will become difficult. You have passed the opportunity. So it is now you to choose. Your mama, your father have the, the, uh, helped you. The church is helping you. The rector is helping you. All these people, they are helping you to succeed. Not to fail. When you fail, then it is you who chose to fail. Of course, you have the choice. It is you who chose to fail. You have to learn to be proactive, to do the things that requires to be done. In his studies, once you pass two days without opening the book, it is already a past opportunity. You must make sure you study constant. That is why it becomes easy for you to do the exam. Don't, don't postpone and say tomorrow. I will come and read tomorrow. Okay. Today, what are you doing? When it is time for reading, you don't read. And you say you will read tomorrow. Today, what are you doing? You are leaving a blank space in your in your uh, brain, muscular. The 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 knowledge need cons consistency. It must be consistent. Education is put in such a way that it has to be consistent. That's why there is class one, class two, class three, class four, class five. One after another. The exercise books, the 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 textbooks you have. 
They have also page one, page two, page three, page four, five, six, up to 200, 500. You must also make sure that you put in your mind the same. That's why when you go for examination, it becomes very easy. Why? Because you have collected the material. You have made your brain work and be able to produce. Be able to produce. When I was sitting for secondary school examination in 90, 91, 92, 92. We were in the exam. Somebody forgot his name. In, uh, we, we, because we were mixed up with so many other people from other, uh, like what you do, the, our center was in Dubagal. Somebody raised up the hand and said, excuse me, I want to ask something. Say, what is the problem? Say, the Akha, I want to ask one of my friends, what is my name? <laughs> Examination fever. It was, a, it was not a serious, it was a serious case. He remembers everything, but the name was missing. He cannot even remember. He, he could have re even written the name of his father. So that you don't panic to that level, you have to get prepared. And that is why you have to constantly get to study, get to do the job. Now here there is extra thing that you are told to do. is prayer. If you don't pray, eh, my friend, don't say you wait until you are a priest, you come and pray. Ha. You ask this ones here. For me now, I am fed up. Ask this ones. You postpone to pray in St. Lawrence. You want to go and pray in the major seminary. And then in the major seminary, you will come and pray when you become a deacon. No. And then when you become a deacon, you come and pray when you become a priest. And somebody will say, no, he will come and pray when he is a bishop. Suppose you don't become, what will happen? You become nothing, no? No, prayer. Work, study, and prayer. That is the reason you are here. And in this case, you will not pass this opportunity regularly, and you will not become poor. No. When the, the the rector or the teachers there write in your copy book there, poor, you remember this, passing over opportunities regularly. That's why you, you, you get poor. But otherwise those marks that are put there for you to get in order to pass, you have the possibility of passing it. My dear brothers and sisters, This is what I wanted to communicate to you today. Keep the seminary. Be happy in the seminary. Because anything of success is always with happiness. Once you are not happy here, you know that that is already a very bad beginning. That is a bad beginning. And you will have a difficult end. When you become a priest, you will be an angry priest. All the time, very angry. Paris priest, Takeyang Marawai. Yeah, you enjoy anger. And then you, pass, you have passed over opportunities because of laziness. So pick it up from there, my dear seminarians. God loves you and he gives you this opportunity. You seize this opportunity. Capitalize on it. Work on it. Make your parents proud. Make the church proud of you. When you pass, when the, the, the examinations are out, the, the rector calls me or send me the text, say, Bishop, all the seminarians pass. On that day, I, 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 I am very maksud. I just say, Mabru Kabuna. I am happy. But when he tells me that all of you have failed, oh, do you think I will be happy? No. Now leave alone your parents, your mother, your father, to hear that you have been in the seminary, eating beans, sleeping uh, in the mosquito net, given the school fees, all this. And then what you give to your parents is that you have failed. How will you communicate that? Eh? You go to say, Mama, I failed. Is it good news? You, they will make a party because you failed. 
and celebrate? Eh? No. We celebrate success, my friend. We celebrate success. So we want you to succeed by all means. And that is why all this effort, concerted effort from friends, from the church, from the priest, from the family, everybody wants you to succeed. And that's why they are here. And I think it is your turn to make us proud, to make the church proud, to make your parents proud, because you are here to succeed. Even if there are difficulties, these difficulties are normal. You are not going to be roasted like St. Lawrence. No. This is a, a saintly example. But you will have to go through all these training sessions in order for you to be strong. Ikhwani wa ikhwati Nas umahat wa abohat alja Asani ahtafil ma seminara in bitana Ana gwoni su katira sande yom tomon Wana gwoni su maumon Kullu hajata alumon dera asuma Fi yom ta naharde Ita kunu mahat wa abohat Ana bashkurku Asani wadi ya ulade Asani saidi umon Wadi la umon fursa de as an woman be a teacher, a jad al woman dare the amal fi haya bitana. As an only kun nas kuisi. Shukran takun makulu musahama. Alita kun giwadi le seminar bitana at Saint Lawrence. Nas ta rejav. Baadin mu'minin wa umahat wa bohat mu'allimin al gideri swini. Mazruf bita belde ita kun gadere di. Al bosi tita kunindi asani yal de yanja. Tiyom ta alela kede robo na bariku ita kun. Bariku kulu, yaani khidma, alita kun gya amon ofi sen Lorenz ini. Ma salawar bitana magadis Lorenz alela. Kheli zidu umur bitakum. Kheli zidu hikma bitakum. Kheli wadi la ita kun kulu, alitu bitlub minu. Asani ito kun bistemir fi musahama wa musahada bita. Bita awlaad bitana de. The Mustaqbal with the Kenisa, Mustaqbal with the Usar, Mustaqbal with the Mujama Bitana. Nihna Nusulli, Inu Gadis Lawrence, he is Tejib, who is Saidna, as a Nihna in Nemshi Gidam, Makulu Khatwar, with the Tedrib, with the Ayal Deb, as a Numan Bamsu Kenisa, Bitana, Fi Al Zamana Jaida, Mun Bada Muskulia. Musulia Kabir. Musulia Asanumani Yishuf. Inu umkulu. Wahid al-jahina. Yaku da'wa de. Wa u derik teshifa da'wa de. Ma shikev. Fi hayabi tau. Beguwa ta'ala. Umun bekun gusus. Wal kaman maag dar kun gesis le zuruf akhar. Ina ma bekula akhalas. De ma tala gesis le zol batal. La. Rabuna. Indu sika bitao Nina binagmana Inu kulu mikun kusus Lakin kaman lu rabana Gairu ras Udilo chokotane Wadi kun diktor Wadi kun maulana Ze maulana misuki na Misuki deka nasa Bukun Paris Priest Bita lokili riwe Lewe nina maara Lakin rabana gala Umubiga tala maulana Badini Manuel inak Kana ufru Biga ustaz bita jama Fa rabana indu Teriga huo bi wodi le na niam huo bugul ya wale di ita ba amfa ini si bude taal beja amulu de amulu de de kulu le niam abita rabun kheli ala sa di ita kun kulu al jafi yom ta lela kheli ita kun ite film ayal bitana ma seminaran bitana kheli yom de ikun yom mubarak le na kulakum wo inshaAllah kan bernama de kalasu itu hatamshi fi amakin bitakum mubarak kata Allah in the name of the Father and of the Son. In the Holy Spirit.
brothers and sisters, on this feast of St. Lawrence, the deacon and martyr, we present our petitions and prayer to God, our Father, for all the needs of the Church and the needs of the world. For the church is scattered throughout the world, that the Holy Spirit may remove the division among Christians, and your church may be a sign of unity in the bond of love. We pray. successors of the apostles that fill with the grace of the Holy Spirit and sustained by our prayers they may be true witnesses to the Lord's resurrection we pray who suffer persecution because of their faith that like like the mother Lawrence that they may be strong in their faith even to the point of forgiving those who injure and kill them we pray here this day that relying on the strength that comes from listening to the word 
and the celebration of the Eucharist, we may be sanctified in, in the truth and sent out into the world to continue the mission of Christ. Father, these are some of our petitions and prayers that we are able to express before you on this feast of St. Lawrence the Deacon and Martyr. All of us who have come here with our different petitions in our hearts that the Lord may truly receive them through the intercession of Deacon Lawrence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Take it from my heart, 
sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, the offerings we joyfully make on the feast day of St. Lawrence, and grant that they may become a help to our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty in our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give order to their faith. To their endurance, you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration 
and we with all the hosts of angels cry out without end, we acclaim. gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and the working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting the pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessings, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessings, 
gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.